Okay, what's this guy doing? Ooh, definition, mapbyfives.com, love it. Here we're gonna let a couple of functions, well, n of them, we're gonna let them be real valued functions. each of which has n minus 1 derivatives. In the interval of question, what are we doing? We're messing with the Ronskian. <laughs> Love this guy. The Ronskian here, we're going to define it uh, to be a function of x where we're also putting in our functions in here, and each one of those are real valued functions. The Ronskian is going to be um, the determinant of the derivative the determinant of the derivatives of the function. You'll take each function and you'll line them across the top row. And then you're going to go and take the n minus 1 derivative all the way down. What's this going to do? It's going to create a, a square array that's going to allow us to um, take the derivative of the guy. And that's how we define the Ronskian. It's a fun word to say. All right, so now we have a theorem. How are we going to use this Ronskian? Well, in this particular example, we're trying to see whether or not a set is independent. If the Ronskian is not zero for any x value in an interval, then you can say that that set is independent in that interval. Here, our set was comprised of functions. Yeah, there's a further to this. If there does exist an x value in that interval, watch out. Your set is not going to be independent. It'll be dependent. I wish I could see an example of something like this. Yeah, all right. Well, maybe I'll key up a couple. Here we go. So we have this set, um, e to the x and e to the 5 plus x. Um, it's my intention to compute the Ronskian. Right, so I'm going to line my functions across the top, and then I'm going to take n minus 1 derivatives down the side. Um, it appears the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and the derivative of e to the 5 plus x is e to the 5 plus x. Oh boy. So I do a little whoopsh, whoopsh. And I take the derivative of that 2 by 2. And then when I do, I'm going to find that those are additive inverses. And the sucker's 0 everywhere. OK, all we needed to do is find a single value that it was 0. And it was 0 everywhere. So that was dependent. Now for our second example, maybe we can get some independence. Well, I don't know. Let's check it. Let's check what? Let's check the Ronskian. So in checking the Ronskian, I'm going to line my functions across the top. Then I'm going to take here two derivatives to make that determinate, determinable. All right. So I take the derivative of 1 plus x squared, get 2x, and then the derivative of that is 2. And then I take the derivative of x, and I get 1. I take the derivative of 1, and I get 0. And similarly, I do that with x squared. Now, it appears that I have determined that I want to expand my determinant along that bottom row. It was all constants. So now I'm filling it in with the usual plus minus pattern. All right. So now I block out the first column, and I am... Um, filling that stuff in. When I block off the second column, um, it's uh, minor is zero, so I don't even worry about it. And now I'm taking the expansion across my last column. I'm going to take the derivative or the determinant of each of those two by twos. And here we go. Hmm, that's nice. All right, now I'm going to add it to, uh, psh, nothing, who cares. And then, all right, fine. That final two by two in my expansion for evaluating my determinant. All right, clean it up. It appears to me that after I do all that, I got 2x squared um, minus, two, oh, plus 2, and minus 2x squared. Finish him. 2. 
not zero. I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that means? Questions.